Everything you've got, pour it on, pour it on! Welcome back to my Trevantalia vlog. Today is stage two, and we're gonna start off by already hurrying because gotta get to breakfast. It's now seven in the morning. 7.45 is when I need to be ready to go to the start in Demre, which is about a 170 minute ride from here. So it's gonna be a hell of a car ride. Today's stage is from Demre to the center of Antalya, not the usual sprint stage because someone decided to plop a massive climb in the middle, so could be something interesting. And right now it's raining, but it's still like four or five hours before the start, so that doesn't mean anything yet. Here we are at the start in Demre. The sun has arrived, as you can see from my eyes squinting. I literally can't see right now. I'm not just going to the start and the finish of today's stage. I'm actually going in the team car of Rembe Pro Cycling Zauerland, led by sportive director at the moment, Greg Henderson. So you might remember him, Andre Greipel's lead out from back in the day. That's the man. Oh, I'll take off my jersey soon, but fuck, it's a cold. It's really cold. But before I met up with the boys at the NBA team car, I checked in on Henry Uli, who took the KOM jersey yesterday. Ooh la 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 la. Yeah, yellow jersey, not the beater. <laughs> My next stop was China Glory to ask Willie Smith, fellow YouTuber, what he thought about the stage. So Willie Smith, what do you think about today? Yeah, so the first 50 case is pretty flat, but I think a lot of guys are going to try and get in the breakaway because they know they've got absolutely zero chance once we hit the climbs. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the poor guy is trying to go for the breakaway. Yeah. If you miss it and you don't get in the breakaway, you spend so much energy and you'll be suffering all day. So yeah, uh, no idea what's going to happen, but it'll be very interesting and hard. Anyway, at this point the riders were ready, the stage was about to begin, so I joined up with Greg Henderson in the team car. Just reminder boys, 28.6. So pretty much once we finish that technical coast loop is where we'll have that first, uh, first sprint we're going for. Bunches everywhere. The entire team of Corazay. Stay vigilant, guys. Uh, there's two Corazay coming back now. There's another one punctured that's like, I don't know, guys, stay off the edge of the roads, all right? Stay off the edge of the roads. So chances are, boys, we're going to fucking light it up on the technical sections, all right? Because we're not far. We're only one, we're only three Ks, really. During today's stage, the team's goal is to put Paul right in the breakaway, because if he can win the first intermediate sprint, he's likely to win the green jersey overall. Come on, Seb, come on, Johnny. Take Paul, all right, and fucking rip it. Despite multiple attempts in the peloton to form a breakaway, it just didn't happen. So a full peloton was storming towards the intermediate sprint. Unfortunately, Paul Wright is not exactly a sprinter, so he got absolutely torched. The sprint was won by Jensen Paul Wright, who stole the green jersey. No one who got punched yesterday got punched there. Anyway, after the sprint, things settled down a little, so I decided to ask Greg about his role at Rembe Pro Cycling. Completely different vibe, uh, Rembe versus uh, Black Spoke, or is that very similar? Yeah, I mean, in some ways it's, it's um, very similar, like small staff yeah. rallying together, you know, we, we wear so many hats, you know, yeah. it's not like I just do everything. TV presentations and race directly, like I'm, you know, the mechanics not just washing bikes and clean them tight, it's like there's yeah. a lot going on, but it's, it's really good, when you've got a good group of guys, it works really well, everybody's puncturing, so just try and ride in that centre section, just leave a metre each side of the road, guys. Have you had many punctures yesterday, or? One of our riders, Henry Applebaum, had a puncture, so we hurried towards him. And just when we thought everything was okay, stop, stop, my, my his bike acted up once again.
Take the bottle, buddy. We're gonna have to get you there. It was sticky bottle time. What the fuck is going on? A third mechanical. You literally can't make this up. We've got a spare bike, don't panic. Understandably, Henry was panicking because it would be difficult to come back to the peloton now. Hang on first. Having had three consecutive mechanicals at a crucial point in this race, Henry is likely to finish out of time or be forced to abandon along the way. So the team is literally incentivized to do the following, bending the rules. right up until we see the UCI Commissaire who could actually find the team for this. So we had to stop. But hey, it saved Henry's race, so the potential threat of a fine was worth it. I can't do anything else for you right now. Commissaire is following, okay? The Commissaire is okay with what we did, but if we do any more, we'll be in trouble. Going real well, mate, going real well. Just. Just one car. As the climb progressed, riders started dropping left and right, with Henry simply flying past them. Right, you there, mate. That's all I can do for you. Great job, mate. Great job. And just pick your way through. Don't panic. Just pick your way through. But some of our riders got dropped too. Find a group, Johnny. Find a group. You're doing well. Good job. Eventually, the duo of Lenny and Henry, and a group further, we saw Yago and Sebastian. Six of our riders dropped. Good job, mate. Keep fighting. You'll get to that group. You'll get to that group. But there was one rider we hadn't seen drop yet, Julian Boresh. So where's fucking Julian? Climbing like a... Like fucking a... demon. We haven't passed Julian. No, we haven't. Fuck me. Go, Julian. Oh, oh is that the front? I'm trying to figure out if there's two or three in there. Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out too. I'll look. Yago, if you can hear me, where the fuck is Julian? Is he in front of you? Nice. Great job, guys. And you guys are going really well. Okay, keep it on, boys. You've only got about 20 k's to go till your fucking race is over, and it's all downhill. Stay with this group. You're doing fucking good. Now the gears fuck like I do. That was much steeper than I thought it was. Yeah, I knew there was steep sections, but we were looking at on Bellevue last yeah. night. I said, oh, there's got to be some sort of mistake because it says we do 20. 20% pitches. Yeah. Now I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> the Rembe riders were all over the road, from the Gruppetto to the front of the race with Julian. So Greg started focusing on Julian, but there was one problem. He did not respond on the radio, so we didn't know if he could hear us. Great job, mate. Great job. That's all the climbing for the day now. Well done. Bori, can you hear me, mate? Bori, can you hear me? With the descent behind us, we still had not heard a single word from Julian. So we had to go to the front and take a look at it ourselves. Is he actually in the group in the first place? I can't see anything. I can't fucking see him. Yeah, he's, he's there. He's there. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Eighth last rider. Him? Tenth last rider. That's him. Are you sure? No, but no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Bori, if you can hear me, please say something on the radio. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, in the middle. See him. He's right there. Fuck yes. Okay. Right, oh buddy, you've done a fucking great job today. Now, there's not a lot of fucking strength left here. So instead of going for that bunch sprint, mate, I want you at two kilometers to go to have a fucking crack at them, all right? I want you to lay down that fucking 570 watts you've got with two Ks to go, all right? Take these motherfuckers on. <laughs> go on the other side of the road and have a go at them. Okay. Fucking oh. <laughs> We're in. Reality is, finishing in the front group in a race like this is a good result for this team. So that's why we celebrate it. The fact that he was there. <laughs> Unbelievable, no okay. Got such a response. <laughs> oh. Why we want to race? <laughs> Come on, Bori. Come on, mate. Fucking unload everything you've got. As the riders entered Antalya, we hoped and prayed for a miraculous win for Julian, but reality is that would be difficult. 
especially with some sprinters still in the group like Lonardi, Govacar and so forth. Come on, buddy, everything you've got. Come on, you've got a good result here. Fucking everything you've got, pour it on, pour it on. Come on, everything you've got, all the way to the line, all the way to the line. But as we say in Belgium, after a sprint of fallen swans, it was Matthäus Govekar that put the Victorias back in Bahrain victorious. Second was Kenneth van Rooy and third, Henry Ullich. But most importantly, that pixel right there, that is our man, that is our legend, Julian Boresch. What a ride. Good effort, Bori. Good effort, mate. Well done. Great job today. Great job. Thanks very much. Boy! Yeah. Oh, it was fucking hard. Yeah, Smash it, mate. It was. Well done. <laughs> but in the end, I had tramps in the leg. Yeah. I really enjoyed that stage. Wonderful being in a in a team environment, in a team car, really living with the riders that are in the race, with the Diaz and so forth. So that was amazing. The organizers fixed me a brand new Salcano bike to go for a ride in Antalya, but that's for later. Time for stage three, the queen stage. We go to Tartelo, which is a climb that is terrifying and I'm not even a rider. So six kilometers roughly at 9%, finishing at 15% in the last kilometer. So the riders are gonna have a hard time. That also means that most likely GC will fall into place today. I've got one pick, which is already kind of two picks, which is Paul Di Cometa as a team. Because they have two riders up in GC, that is Piganzoli and Paul Double. Tartelo really fits them. And I think I'll go with Paul Double as my winner today. Good luck, eh? yeah, thank you. On the morning of stage three, I had a mission. But before we get to that, I met up with one of the coaches at Bahrain Victorious, Ioannis Tamoridis, to hear their plans for the day with their GC leader, Eduardo Zambanini. A difficult stage We're coming today. I think it's uh, the most important stage for the GC with the climb finish. It's a steep climb, but also uh, the route before it's not so easy, it's yeah. quite uh, complicated. So we need to see which teams we need to control the race. We need to watch uh, which teams they will go to the breakaway and keep a good uh, gap and be ready for the last uh, and the final uh, climb. And after that conversation, it was time to take off one of my bucket list items here in Turkey. My first ever kebab. Thing is, I know nothing about kebab, so I took a chicken kebab because that felt comfortable to me. And honestly, I really liked it, but then other people told me that a chicken kebab is not the right kebab, so I'm asking you, did I eat the right kebab or the wrong kebab? Anyway, kebab talk aside, the stage is about to begin, so let's head to the start line. Quickly after the stage started, a five-rider breakaway went up the road, but the peloton kept them very tight at around three minutes. Meanwhile, I headed to the stage finish to check out the Tartelo climb myself. We did the first two kilometers by car. I reckon it was about 7-8% steady throughout. But most importantly, the road is not a layer of asphalt. It's some kind of bricks. It's not like cobbles. Cobbles are much harder, but it's not as easy as road asphalt, I think, either. And next to that, the second half of the climb became steeper and steeper. And walking the final few hundred meters, the percentages were crazy, like 15% in places. Today I decided to not go in a team car, decided to recon the Tartalo climb, the last climb of today's stage. Very steady at the start, but towards the end really steep up to 15%. Then I gotta say that final kilometer, this is gonna be a really hard one for the riders. Before we continue, Sirocco just released a brand new beginner's kit collection. Super affordable, yet still qualitative. I enjoy wearing their core Portoi jersey in combination with their SRX Pro Elite bib shorts. You can get 10% off any Sirocco products through the link in the description or with the code BENJINASEN. Check out Sirocco. Meanwhile, the riders were heading to the foot of the final climb and the final two riders from the breakaway were caught with just under 10k to go. I had no clue what was happening because there's no live broadcast. Both Josse and I were ready for the finish at the top. Riders were all over the road and Davide Piganzoli attacked with about two kilometers to go. He quickly went solo, a masterful climbing performance. And as he entered the final few hundred meters, we could finally see a sparkle of him.
In the end, it was an Italian 1-2-3, Alessandro Pinarello and Eduardo Zambanini finishing second and third. All three climbers under the age of 23, the future of Italy is looking... The script said bright, but they can't fucking TT, so I can't lie to you. Fortunately, the start and finish of the last stage, both on Talia, so no transfers. And the starting spot was pretty cool, Antalya Aquarium. It was quite funny that the riders had to go through the actual souvenir shop of the aquarium to get to the sign-on. And the sign-on itself was on one of the glass windows of the aquarium, with an actual diver in the water behind the sign-on. This was a weird experience. I chatted to a few riders before the start of the stage, but then I met someone I didn't expect to see here. It was Vincenzo Nivoli, who seems to be enjoying retirement. God, the man still looks fit. But anyway, today I actually missed the start because I was going to be in a car in front of the riders, together with one of the owners of Pro Cycling Stats, Stefan. As a former weapon app developer myself, I was super intrigued by seeing how the backend side of the PCS Live Stats worked. Yeah, now we're going to do, uh, do the starts. And uh, I just had a picture of, uh, of the GC leader. So now I'm doing some general stats just before the start. In the race, the early breakaway has formed, and there's someone in there we know. Paul Wright, he's back. If he can get over the big climb and take the points at the second intermediate sprint, he can win the Green Beyond Antalya jersey, so I'm rooting for him. The lead of the breakaway is now over two minutes, so that means that our car is allowed to go behind the breakaway now. So we're sitting at the intermediate sprint right now, waiting at the intermediate sprint for the riders to come. So let's see the sprint. Come on, Paul, come on, eh? There we go. Back in the car. So in the last 10 minutes, the breakaway has gone from like two minutes of a gap to zero. The breakaway is gone. Unfortunate, I was hoping Paul Wright would be in green, so that ain't happening today. Might be a GC attack in the peloton. We don't know, so we'll find out soon enough. And yes, there was some GC action on the main climb. There was still over 80 kilometers left to ride. But over the crest, six riders attacked. Fabio van den Boschke of Alpesin, Alessandro Fancello of Q36.5, Hartijs de Vries of TDT Unibet, Roland Talman of Tudor, and the last two were Halvor Dolven and Adna Holter of UnoX. And the last name is important because Holter was only 49 seconds behind the lead before the stage started. And the gap started growing to above one minute, so he was actually in the virtual lead. So in the peloton, or what's left of it, Polti Cometa was working hard to defend the lead of Piganzoli. It took them blood, sweat and tears because the six wider group worked well together. But in the final kilometer, the peloton had closed most of the gap and Piganzoli's lead was safe. The stage, however, would go to the breakaway. And the sprint in the group was between Hartijs de Vries and Fabio van den Bosch. <laughs> Hey guys! <laughs> there we go, the finish of the Tour of Antalya completed. We've got a stage win for Hartijs de Vries of TDT Unibet. So they get it in clutch to get it with their green jersey of Beyond Antalya. What a win, man! Yeah, I had a really good winter and I felt really strong. So it's really nice to like show it immediately. <laughs> There we go, the race is officially over. Davide Piganzoli is the winner of the GC of the Tour of Antalya. It was a good addition. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed every single stage in a different way, which I kind of wanted. And uh, it was great seeing my first mountaintop finish. Great being in a team car with Greg Henderson. Also a fun last day as well. So I'm really happy about this trip. The Tour of Antalya might be over, but this video is not, because tomorrow morning, I'll go on a bike ride before I head off to England, so that should be fun.